Venus Williams covets the trophy and hopes to follow in Althea's pioneering footsteps. But another talented teenager, Martina Hingis, who's already won two Grand Slam titles this year, looks for her first U.S. Open crown. Two men also covet the trophy. Patrick Rafter, in his first Grand Slam final, is bidding to rebuild the links to Australia's glorious tennis legacy. And Great Britain's Greg Rosetsky is seeking to provide his countrymen with a small measure of solace. Since Arthur Ashe won the first U.S. Open 30 years ago, only 16 men and 11 women have been privileged to hold aloft this treasured tennis trophy. On this championship Sunday, four players share a common goal to have their names forever linked to the history of the U.S. Open. City so nice, they named it twice the capital of commerce, culture, and communications. And today, the city that never sleeps is also the capital of big time New York City tennis. Ten miles to the east of Manhattan, nestled in the heart of Flushing Meadows, Arthur Ashe Stadium, which, like its namesake, is classy, bigger than life, and well suited to bring us great tennis memories. Four players remain now from a field of 128 men and 128 women. And as they pass through the entrance to the players' lounge, they'll see some familiar lyrics on the wall. And by day's end, one man and one woman will be on top of the tennis world on this Day 14 Championship Sunday in New York, New York. Well, it's official now. Summer's over. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with my partner, Patrick McEnroe. Welcome to our coverage of Championship Sunday here on CBS. And this is the day, the day we crown our men's champion and our women's champion. And Martina Hingis and Venus Williams will be out here in just a couple of moments. How about that matchup, Patrick? Well, Pat, you know, when you're an athlete and when you're a fan of sports, you want to see the best. And we've got the best today in Martina Hingis trying to create history. And you want to see someone unintimidated by the best, someone fresh, someone new, someone really coming out of nowhere, and that's Venus Williams. We got all the makings of classic, classic tennis today. You might think at home, what were you doing when you were a teenager? One is 16, <laughs> one is 17, and at 16, Martina Hingis has a lot of history behind her and about to make some, perhaps. She may very well do that, Pat. She's trying to be the sixth woman in history to win more than three Grand Slams in one year. Look at that list. Margaret Court, Billie Jean King, Martina Navratilova, Steffi Graf, Monica Seles, and she's doing this at 16 years of age, Martina Hingis. <laughs> Unbelievable story. And don't forget that Venus Williams is 17 years old, and she has definitely been the story of this tournament. Chris, Chris Ebert, the story of so many tournaments here. There's her photo, and the champion to be and her opponent will walk right by those pictures of the great champions. There's Venus in the hallway, a familiar sight, beaded and carrying flowers as they're about to come out right behind her, Martina Hingis. And what must be going through their minds? Well, I think Martina Hingis really expected to be here, Pat. She was the favorite. Everyone thought we'd see her on this final day. But Venus Williams, I don't think she expected to be here, but here she is, and what an ovation for her. The fans in New York have had a couple of days to think about this, and they're pumped up for it. Definitely, and Venus Williams, she's had a couple of days to think about it, too, and I think it's going to be very important for her to get off to a good start today because Martina Hingis, she's been there so many times before, a little edge in the experience, but Venus has really seemed to improve with each and every match here, so quickly becoming just a really cool and calm player. 
fact, both of them in our dealings with them throughout the last couple of weeks, they're both so confident, so cool. Nothing seems to rattle either one of them. No, and there's certainly been some instances that could have rattled either one of them. But as you said, Pat, nothing that's going to get in their way. They've got one goal today, and that's the U.S. Open title. Out here on Arthur Ashe Stadium, the Women's Singles Championship. Let's go upstairs now to Tim Ryan and Mary Carrillo. Tim, you're on. Thank you, Pat. The youngest pair of opponents ever in a Grand Slam final. Uh, these two uh, exceptionally gifted young women, one coming through the ranks in a more traditional style, Martina Hingis, the other exploding on the scene in a tournament her dad didn't even uh, think it was a great idea to enter this year, and that's Venus Williams. Uh, it's going to be fabulous. I mean, this is a very, very, very special day for both these players and for women's tennis, Tim. I mean, Venus Williams has come on so big and so strong. It is going to be interesting to see how she behaves on this day against Martina Hingis. This is, Martina Hingis has been around even though she's younger than Venus Williams. She's played on an awful lot of Sundays and she's won on an awful lot of Sundays. This is the first time Venus has ever played on a day like this. As you can say, see a lot more tennis in Hingis. Her career titles already are so overwhelmingly impressive, including two majors this year, winning at the Australian Open and Wimbledon, losing in the finals of the French Open. Venus Williams, I mean, she really had a pretty dreary Grand Slam record her rookie year playing the majors. Lost in the in the second round of the French in the first round of Wimbledon, and boy, she's already knocked out two big seeds to get to this. And in fact, in the semifinals, she very, very, barely got by Irina Spirlea. Right. She was down two match points. Here's how she handled one of them. This is match point for Irina Spirlea of Romania. Of, on the run. Venus Williams smokes one down the line with that huge backhand of hers, which is her better ground stroke side. A third of an inch one way or another, and Sperlea would have been here today. And Venus Williams would have Six been gone. Five, this, to me, was the, the loudest shot of the 1997 U.S. Open. It was just a remarkable thing to see. I mean, if, if Venus Williams can swing away like that today, swing that freely, then... Uh, It'll be something. Not only did we see power and determination, but a lot of maturity in the game of Venus Williams through the tournament, and especially in that last match, getting past Berlea in three sets in that tiebreak. Now, uh, I think what we've heard most about Martina Hingis is the fact that she is so mature and poised on the court, much more so than her opponents would ever expect from somebody so young. Much more than anybody. I mean, this woman, Martina Hingis, has an incredible understanding of the game. She's got a complete game, really, that has not been seen before in women's tennis, and surely never by a teenager. Against Lindsay Davenport, against whom she'd lost just about a month ago, she totally changed things up. Her, the adaptability she has got is different from what anybody else has. And she, and she has also proven in this case that not only did she learn from the Davenport loss, but she can handle an awful lot of power and pace. And Lord knows she'll be having that today against Hingis. She will see Venus. power and pace from <laughs> Venus Williams today. That is her game. And as Venus Williams herself has said, during this tournament, she's learned that she's got to be even more aggressive. And we'll be back to see how it goes in a moment. Another beautiful afternoon at the USDA National Tennis Center for Championship Tennis. 79 degrees, low humidity. The players are happy about that, as are the fans. Let's go down to courtside and our reporter, Andrea Joyce. All right, Tim, I'm with Orisine Williams, Venus's mom. Uh, she has been so calm and composed throughout this tournament. Orisine, how would you describe her state of mind today? Well, her state of mind right now is calm. It's been like that all morning, last night. She's just seemed happy to play and go out and have fun and do the best she can. We have seen her refer to notes during the match, um, reminders of what to do that your husband, Richard, helps her with. What was the biggest piece of advice, the biggest point he made for her today? Well, just to relax and have fun and have a good time. And we, so she can always cherish it and remember it the rest of her life. Speaking of your husband, he made some comments. He was quoted in the paper as suggesting that the Spurlea incident was racially motivated. What do you think? I really don't know. I can't say what's in a person's mind, so only she knows. He had also said that he thought he still wasn't sure that this was a good idea that she was here, that maybe she could be doing something better with her time. Um, do you share that thought? Well, right now, this is for Venus, and right now she's enjoying it, so, well, I'm what she wants. To I would imagine it's pretty tempting to let her play more, though, when she's having this much fun and this much success. Yeah, that I do, too, but uh, it, be, it, depends on, it depends on Venus, because uh, she loves the game. She really does love the game, and I've always would ask her the question if she loves what she's doing to do it but if she doesn't 
anytime she don't have to do anything, anytime she wants to stop, it'll be fine with me. And she knows that. So she's loving it, she's enjoying it, and she's happy. Okay, best of luck to you. Stay calm, okay? All right. All right, thanks again. Back to you, Tim. Well, there's a mom with a great perspective on, on this dramatic afternoon. Wants her daughter to have fun out there. She is, after all, just 17. Let's hope that she enjoys every single second of this event here this afternoon with the eyes of millions around the world watching. Likewise for Martina Hingis, whose mother, Melanie Molitor, her coach, is here keeping a close eye on her, hoping for her joy. This championship match goes to the server, Venus Williams. 15. There's Melanie Molitor, her mother and coach, who very much like the Williams, has taken her own singular course in guiding her daughter right from the first time she racked her hand. On the paint from Williams, Pretty Love. Martina Hingis, remarkable story, of course, age 16 and rank number one coming in here. Remember, Steffi Groff not in this tournament because of injury this year. Only two losses, and that record includes two Grand Slam victories. Williams has really grown in this tournament, Tim. She, you know, people say you learn from your losses. Well, you know what? You learn from, learn from your wins, too. <laughs> She's learned to keep the ball in play better. Look at that. That's the big backhand. This is the side of her baseline game I really like more than anything else. Her backhand side, another big winner from there. Just 17 years old as Williams. She's turned 17 in June, and Martina will be 17 at the end of the month. Oh! Just long. These two through to through six matches are separated only by three winners. Hingis three more winners than than Williams, but Williams has struck 66 more errors. There is another error. This could really determine the match for Martina Hingis. Doesn't really beat herself. And that forehand side of Venus Williams is, is still a little loose. I'm sure with time, it'll become a stronger stroke. That's wide from the backhand side and a break point. Williams starting out in command of this game and now facing break point, opening game of the match. U.S.A. National Tennis Center, game two of the match. Martina Hingis breaking Venus Williams in the first game, serving now. An error from Hingis there, and some early nerves for Venus Williams have been very evident. Up 40-15 in that first game, then Venus struck four straight errors. Previously, both this year, 15. Martina Hingis won both matches in straight sets at the Lipton and Key Biscayne and at San Diego, both on hard court, similar to this one. Oh! And Hingis, a little loose as well. I guess we're seeing some teenage nerves and also the wind, which is a factor down there, has been during the tournament. Oh! 
13. Nerves are not confined to teenagers, as we've seen on both sides of the draw, too. It's easier to play when you're younger, in my opinion. It's when you get older that <laughs> you really feel it. I think you'll see those uh, unforced error stats that reduce as the match goes on. set up for Venus Williams to just poke that one home. Put another error in her column. So Hingis holds to take a two-lap lead here in the first set. Our reporter did attempt to speak with Melanie Molitor, the mother and coach of Martina Hingis, but uh, the Swiss woman uh, not too comfortable in the English language and politely declined. Williams still trying to find the range here. Third game of the match. She's already number 27 in the world as a re result of her results here. 26 and 9 on the season, including six victories here at the Open. Three break points. For Martina Hingis and a chance to go up three love. to tell from this early shaky beginning by Williams, but are we seeing a different player in the seventh match for her in this tournament than uh, prior to coming into the U.S. Open? Oh, clearly, clearly she's still trying to settle in, Tim, and who can blame her for feeling an awful lot on this grand occasion in front of 22 and a half thousand people. And he is now helping out Venus Williams. He's not been a classic final by any stretch so far. I think they're both trying to hit through the moment a little bit. relaxed response from Williams there, just timing that ball as it was coming right up to her hip and squirting it down the line for the winner. Maybe that'll loosen her up a little bit. Well, that had to feel pretty good. Another break point, her second double fault. that long. Great point number five in this game. 
caught it off the top of the frame there. She takes very big swings, Williams, so she'll shank a few for you. Oh. Hendis missing badly on the return. Back to Deuce. Hingis with a break in the first game. Break point number six in this game alone. Changed the tenor of the match for Williams. Obviously, Venus came in a little overwhelmed by, by everything. Had she lost this rally and gone down free love, maybe she'd never have been able to loosen up her shoulders and go for her winners, which is what she's so capable of doing. That could be a very big point for her. And probably just uh, the length of that rally will help them both, too, <laughs> getting more balls in than they've been able to so far. Establishing some rhythm. whistles from high in the Arthur Ashe Stadium, but the Mac Cam does its thing. up three love with two breaks here in the first set Thank you. against Venus Williams first unseated woman to advance to a US Open singles final in the open era and that's a miss the seventh error from Martina Hingis who normally plays a lot cleaner but she's up a break already because there have been 13 unforced errors from Williams. Hingis had the open court and just was a little bit too loose on that volley. Martina played that drop shot, uh, one that we showed in the opening, the kind of thing that she will do. Venus Williams says, you hit them, I'll get there. <laughs> That's right. She did. To the net is the one who's controlling the baseline. Venus said after a match against Berlay, I came to the net much more, something I really wanted to do in the big matches. Oh! Right. I have to do it. She says, I have good volleys, I need to get there. But you cannot get there unless you're making your move off the ground or with your serve. So Williams has to improve her serving or start positioning herself better from the baseline. Oh! They both have served so well through the tournament at 60%, both over 60% on first serve. A shaky start for each of them here with two breaks having Hingis up three love, mainly on the errors of Williams. The number 66 player in the world played Larissa Nealon of Russia on this stadium court. She also beat Arthur Hoover here, Janet Kruger of South Africa. 
Then Sundrine Tetsu of Spain, and then again, held off two match points against Serena Sperlea. So she's used to this court. But she's clearly unused to this occasion. And uh, that's really pretty much to be expected. She's also, as, as we've seen, never in the past two meeting against Hingis made much of an impression on her. In fact, uh, Venus herself said, the first time I played okay, I didn't play that well. She definitely played well. Second time, I just gave it away, her view of the second loss to Hingis earlier this year. Well, this one's going pretty much the same way. There's John Newcomb talking with Patrick Rafter, who will compete in the men's final against Greg Rosetsky of Great Britain. Rafter, the number 13 seed from Australia. And that's Tony Roach with a hat on. Newcomb and Roach work together running the Australian Davis Cup team. Martina Hingis hadn't done this. I mean, she's routining Venus Williams and just playfully takes an, uh, a phony swipe at that out ball. And she's she's knocking her out of this tournament right now, but that's, that's a little too much taunting for my taste. But Lord knows we've had an awful lot to discuss about the <laughs> attitudes of the phenoms at this fortnight, and all year, in fact. He might be surprised to see this. Five love Martina Hingis. Favorite, of course, as a number one seed against the unseeded Venus Williams. But so far, uh, mainly due to uh, some nervous errors from Williams. Hingis up five love. Serving for the first set. Hingis likes playing phenoms. As a fellow phenom, Tim, uh, she takes care of him. She, she does not want to lose to anybody that the big buzz is about. Another smash error there. And again, managing the court so beautifully is Hingis. Williams showed the speed to get to the drop shot, but Hingis showed hers to make the winning point. at the U.S. Open Juniors semifinals. Hingis played Anna Kornikova. Kornikova, of course, did so well by getting herself to the semis of Wimbledon this year, but Hingis beat her 0-0 on Jeez. purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and Martina Martin Hingis seems very intent on drubbing the phenom Venus Williams the same way out here today. A couple of set points in a match that has not even lasted more than 22 minutes so far. Oh, she liked that one. Stretching out for the winning volley and the first set. Six love, Martina Hingis. She's got such great knowledge and uh, such a good feel for the court, Hingis, that she can be, she'll jerk any tennis player in the world around and make her way to the final shot. Venus Williams, as fine a striker of the ball as she is, has not the experience, has not the match play, and uh, that's why even though she can get the shot, she doesn't know where the next ball is always getting to as the Williams family watches on. I love what Orosine said, just relax and have fun out there. So far... I don't think she's relaxed or having fun. Look at that. Perfect play from Hingis. And then again, Williams there because Hingis' game is so clean and her thinking so original. You don't even know what to defend against. If you're Williams. Yeah, 
Bob. Angus has tidied things up considerably, even though winning the first set six love, she made a bunch of errors herself. Well, she's not making them now. I mean, the kind of play that Hingis is showing here is grimly beautiful. <laughs> Hingis has averaged less than one hour for each of her six matches going into this match against Williams, who's been out on the court an average of an hour and a half. The six love set it was way back when Alice Marble was beating Helen Jacobs. Yeah. This is what Venus Williams must do. Play the points as quickly and aggressively as possible. Because once a rally starts, you've got to give Hingis a tremendous advantage. fans here want to see more match that they're whistling anyway. First set unforced errors. Williams with 17. Hingis with 7. Something as we've been saying she's kind of tidied up here. And there's another oh. one. From Williams. And a break point again for Hingis. That Visine Mac cam, our special camera that can capture speeds of over 100 miles per hour or better. It's positioned on the four corners of the baseline. And uh, it's been doing wonderful work. Confirming most of the time, good calls. Good angle from Williams there, shaking off one break point. Venus Williams did a nice job of getting Hingis to the net on Williams' terms and staying in her tuck to hit that cross-court forehand. We're in the first game of the second set here with Hingis having a shutout in the first. the second break point here in this first game of the second set. Tremendous movement to chase down that short one from Hingis. The fans here screaming for Williams to get on the scoreboard. Here's your chance. <laughs> Venus Williams on the board, the first game of set number two. Number two, second set, Hingis serving down love one. She has a set in hand. Another error from Williams. He was in position. 15 love. Well, on the changeover, you can see Venus Williams going to her crib sheet there. She takes uh, little notes, uh, reminders of how she wants to uh, play this match. Oh. That's great. That's 
that's the fifth winner of 15. set two for Venus Williams. She only had four winners in all of set one. So it's nice to see that she's loosening up a little bit. But I'm, I really think that... King has played such a goofy shot to end that last game in Venus's favor. Favor, I'm not sure she was really going for it. Williams uh, upset, thinking that ball was out. She did play it, the right thing to do, but her shot went long. Donna Butler in the chair. Now that's a very, very close call, as Avising Matcam says. It looks like it caught the edge there, but. That's a close one. Goes in Hingis's favor, and so Williams protested the chair. Baseline. Pretty old. Twenty-one unforced errors tell much of the tale. checked with the base linesman. Made the previous call at upset her, a close call, but again, Bizine uh, Matcam sees things the human eye can't see. That was a real close one. And it's Mingus. Point from two love here on the second set. Tremendous power from Venus Williams to launch into that backhand that big. It's hard to make Martina Hingis look out of position and off balance. You've really got to strike the ball well. After this Berlea match, a member of the press at the press conference asked Williams if Hingis' game and her record intimidated Venus in any way, and she said, I've never been that type of person who was like scared or fearful. I can't let it hold me back, and I just won't. I don't think we've seen fear, we've just seen nerves out here. Okay, Hingis. And Hingis holds for two luck. One all, pardon me. One, One all. Game. We're back with another great shot of the Fuji film blimp being piloted today by Captains John McHugh and Errol Van Eaton. And uh, we're giving you a nice view of them floating above. One all here on the second. Martina Hingis explains about the Williams game. She says, you know, her game has never worried me in the past. They've played a couple of times. They've been straight sets wins for Hingis. In fact, it was very haughty Hingis who went into the press conference after her last win over Williams at the Lipton event earlier this spring where she beat her on a hard court just like this one. Some of the beads had come off of Venus Williams' hair during the match and she dismissively tossed a bead on the press conference and said, Here's, this is a souvenir, one of the pearls. Of the match. So believe me, Hingis isn't intimidated either. And many players 
Tim have shown Love an awful country. lot of intimidation in facing Venus Williams. I mean, to me, that, that's a big part of why Williams has been able to defeat some of the seeds here this week. That's intimidating, too. Yeah, that'll get their attention. First ace of the day for Venus Williams, 111 miles an hour. For the all. She can get it up around 120. Good serve there. Saves a break point. Very few fingerprints have been on either of these players apart from their own parents with their tennis game. games to one here in the second set. And now, this tournament summary, sponsored by Fidelity Investments. Well, a quick look at our tournament summary shows Venus Williams is the first unseeded women's finalist in the open era. And our upcoming men's final will be without an American for the first time since 1989. Rafter and Rosetsky, they'll be there. Combined, they've lost only three sets so far. Here today, along with a pot of dough. Martina Hingis, the top seed, 6 love and 2 1. Over Venus Williams, the American phenom. First unseeded player to make the final since Schreiber back in 1978. That's the a, first American, sorry, first player playing in their first tournament to make the final since Pam Shriver. Tim, that's a, the 26th error from Venus and the 13th on her stronger side, her backhand side. It's got to hurt your confidence a little bit if your best side is betraying you. Melanie Molitor has guided her kid just as Venus, Venus Williams' father, Richard. Brand of tennis. Venus's game has also been looked at by the USTA. They spent a little bit of time, their junior development program. She spent a little bit of time at Volatari's Academy down in Florida, and Rick Macy worked with her for quite a bit of time. But for the last few years, it's all Richard. Oh, yeah. Two exceptional volleys in that game for Hingis, and then finishing it with a little drop volley. And again, if you're controlling the backcourt, you can control the forecourt, and that is what Hingis has been able to do. She is having a romp out here. There is nothing, except for the odd winner from Williams, there is nothing that can really trouble or worry Hingis. Williams held to win the first game of the second set. That's been her only game victory. Nice to see a smile on Venus Williams's face. She's done such a tremendous job to get here. And another miss from Williams. It's important for her to know that even though she, it's going to be a very difficult thing to to win this match and win her first major. She is still right in the middle of the good times. Patrick Rafter and Greg Rosetsky. That should be a more competitive final. That's upcoming. so well on Angie can afford to play. Well, Venus Williams out adorable her on this point. Yeah. <laughs> well put. A nice, solid, angled volley to win the point. <laughs> Venus 
Williams knocked out two seated players to make it to the final. Unseated and just a remarkable performance to make this final. Any protest? 30 all. The excitement caused by Williams uh, raising uh, perhaps some unrealistic expectations against the number one seed. Well, she's not playing the tennis that got her here, too. No, that's and right. that's a pity. one Hingis takes a little longer look at the remark and a glance to the chair no relief deep corner serve from Williams there is sponsored by Nike. Citizen. Ernst and Young. And by Heineken. Martina Hingis, a not untypical pose between sets. Uh, Staring into her future, which looks very, very strong right now. Up a set, up a break. She looked a little too relaxed in the last game, but Williams held to make it 3-2. Venus unable to put a series of shots together here to give herself the confidence that, uh, that she can get back on the track she showed through the first six matches in this tournament. see that it's been pretty much of a romp for Martina Hingis. She's beaten two seated players, Sanchez Vicario and Lindsay Davenport, and not really pressed by anybody. Little difficulty against the Kofs of it. Williams having making no impression on the Hingis serve yet. I don't know what that was, no! but I'm sure she'd like to recall that. Hingis has only lost eight points on her serve the whole match. love 4-2 Martina Hingis trying to nail down her first ever U.S. Open championship and look at that 31 errors for Venus Williams only 10 by Hingis seven of those came in the first set seven of Hingis is 10 Discouragement in the Venus Williams box. All of her sisters came up to support her. This match today, joining Mom Morrissey. Oh. Hingis 
Hits with an error. Williams family on the right is another fine tennis player, Serena. She'll be out here soon on this U.S. Open court. No question about her ability and her sisters, uh, Lindrea, Isha, and Yutunda. She came up from Washington, D.C. to join Mama. That's Mom in the red in the middle, her family. Venus's father, Richard, says he's not even watching this match. Hard to believe. Apparently looked at the semifinal on videotape after it uh, occurred. He said, I'm not going to be a tennis dad sitting in the stands with my head going back and forth. <laughs> he said that was seal-like. Uh, he said that for a while, too. He is a unique tennis father. What do you love, Venus Williams? The kid doesn't agree with him on everything, by the way. I'd love to see Venus Williams get this right. You know, I mean, she can have such a tremendous impact on the game on so many levels. Angus tried something she didn't need to do. She knew it as soon as she hit it. 4-3. Outside on the grounds, a look at the plaque in honor of Slew Hester, former USDA president, one of the most popular ever, and certainly a man who had such a great deal to do with the success of the U.S. Open here in New York. Inside on Arthur Ashe Stadium Court, Martina Hingis serving at 4-3 in the second. She won the first set 6-love. She's relaxed a little bit too much in the last game or so. We'll see if she'll snap back to attention. She has not been threatened at all that was on serve. Only the ninth point lost, as you mentioned in the last game. There was an awful lot of overheated attention on the incident between Venus Williams and Arena Sperlea in the last round. There was a bump on a changeover. Neither one of them giving ground to each other. And the absent Richard Williams uh, really felt that that whole moment was freighted with racial meaning and tension. But Venus blew it off. Just about the way she hit that backhand. And he blew off that backhand, too. <laughs> Richard Williams is a product of, of poverty in Louisiana, Old South, and he sees things that uh, not everyone else sees. Fair enough. Oh. Again, Two great points. The big numbers, even just about even on winners, but the unforced errors tell the story. First break point opportunities for Venus Williams. The entire match. the most expensive error that Venus Williams has struck today. She did a terrific job of controlling the point, got herself to the net, and flubbed an easy forehand volley. She's still got another break point. Away. That's her stronger side, her backhand side. Did too much with it, came up off her shot. And now Hingis giving one away. Hingis did not like that call at the far end, but her view wasn't too great.
match by Venus Williams, and she's made this second set much more competitive. For all, after a six-love first set, going to Hingis. Forty years ago, Althea Gibson won the first U.S. national tennis title of her career. She's watching today from home. And in Arthur Ashe Stadium, Venus Williams has come alive. Oh! It's kind of fun to watch, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. Crowd wanting a match here. Venus Williams trying to give it to them. She had to go three to beat Sperlea. Ingus has been in total control until that last game. about her daughter's situation here, but she has a set in hand. She's dropped the ball, though, Tim. She's gotten a little flat and let Venus work her way in. That's double fault number four from Williams. And another department Venus can help herself on is maintaining good, good height keeping that great extension on her serve. Sometimes her head dips down. <laughs> Nothing loose or sloppy about the Hingis game. Her strokes and her footwork are as tight and as compact as can be, and that's why it's hard to read them. these players have showed that they will, can, and want to compete. That's bad right. luck for Williams. Suddenly a break point opportunity for Hingis. And both players also, Tim, have shown that they will compete from anywhere on the court, which is my favorite part of all the phenoms this year. Kornikova can play from anywhere, Mirjana and Lucic as well. And that is fun to see, to have such complete games at such young ages. Another serve coming. Tina Hingis, who will be 17 on the 30th of September, serving for her first U.S. Open Championship. 5-4 in the second set. Williams' learning curve went up so much this this U.S. Open, winning those six rounds. She'll le learn even more from this man. too much of a swing. Her, her game is still unharnessed, Tim. That's fair enough. But uh, 
as I said, she'll replay this tape perhaps and see what she could have done better. Tremendous progress through the course of this tournament. Nailing that line. Williams just got better and better. Beat the 11th seed in the semis. others have achieved that in the same year. for a national championship. I disappoint is Venus Williams, but she can look back on what she achieved here and grow from it. For Martina Hingis, the glory of another Grand Slam championship, winner at the Australian, winner at Wimbledon, finalist at the French, and now the U.S. Open champion. Let's go to Pat O'Brien. All right, Tim, thank you. And so he's smiling, confident as she has been this whole tournament. Martina Hingis goes into the history books. And Venus Williams goes into our hearts as she stormed through this U.S. Open and found herself in the finals. And there's nothing to frown about there, Patrick McEnroe. No, definitely not, Pat. It was a tough, tough day for her. I think, as I mentioned at the top, I thought it would be important for her to start off well as to see her mom looking on. And there's... Martina's mother checking things out, but she just was a little nervous, I think, in the beginning, and Martina Hingis, just so solid. Every ball she hits has a purpose, and she had a purpose this year, and that was to dominate women's tennis, and that's what she's done. It's one thing saying that you lost in the finals of the U.S. Open. It's also one thing saying you lost against Martina Hingis, who just, it's just an unbelievable, uh, has an arsenal of weapons. It's unbelievable. Yeah, her game is just so complete and so poised and relaxed out there. And as we mentioned at the top, you know, now she's one of the only six women to win three Grand Slam titles or more in one year. And she's got a chance to win the Grand Slam down the road. Would there be some impressive women's names on that list? Martina Navratilova, <laughs> Monica, Steffi. They're all the first name basis. Margaret Court. Okay, let's remind everybody, of course, still to come the men's championship out of the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, Greg Rosetsky against Patrick Rafter, a spirited match we're looking for there. We'll come back and we'll go out for the trophy presentation at Arthur Ashe Stadium right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the U.S. Open, a USTA event, is sponsored by Lincoln Mercury. Texaco. Fujifilm. And by Fidelity Investments. New York City and Arthur Ashe Stadium has a new champion, the first one in this stadium. Her name is Martina Hingis. She is 63 and two on the year, sounding very much something like a Michael Jordan something. 63 and two, that is pretty darn incredible. The ceremony is about to begin for the winner's trophy down there. Let's go up to Tony Trabert. Well, ladies and, well, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for two wonderful players?
It's now my pleasure to introduce the President of the United States Tennis Association and the Chairman of the U.S. Open, Mr. Harry Marmion. Harry? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody that thinks tennis is in trouble should just look at these two great young competitors. They're going to carry us for a decade or more. Congratulations. And now it's my pleasure to recognize the chair umpire for today's match, Donna Butler from San Diego, California. Donna? And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the president of the Chase Manhattan Bank, Mr. Tom Lebrecht. Tom? Th thank you, Tony. For more than 16 years, Chase and all of its employees worldwide have been really happy to be part of this terrific event. The Open, which I think is the greatest Open in the greatest city, and we are proud to sponsor the Women's Championships. I would go on and tell you that Martina and Venus provided us an exciting look at the present and a real representation of the promise of the future of women's tennis. <laughs> Venus, I've got to tell you, and probably the crowd doesn't know it, your performance this two-week period was the best debut of anyone in the Open in the last 20 years. And I'd like to present you, on behalf of Chase, the runners-up check for $350,000. Venus, first of all, congratulations on a sensational tournament. Thank you. Getting the finals of your first Grand Slam here in the United States, you did a marvelous job. Didn't get off to a great start against a great champion, but you came back very well in the second set. Thank you very much. Do I get to say a speech now? Say something. Okay. Um, first of all, I um, want to thank my God, Jehovah, because without him, I wouldn't be here today. And I want to thank my family and my dad. Hi. And um, I want to thank New York crowd because you guys were there all the way with me. And I'm sorry I couldn't pull it through today, but uh, Martina played a little better than me, and she was able to handle the situation a bit better, and um, I don't think you guys could ask for a, a better winner for this tournament. <laughs> so thank you very much. See you next year, and we're all very happy. See you later. All right, Venus Williams, ladies and gentlemen. And Tom, I think you have a check for our winner as well. Yes, Martina, four Grand Slam finals, three championships, what more can be said? Congratulations. I'd like to present you with a check for $650,000. Martina, congratulations on an unbelievable year. If it weren't for an accident of falling off a horse, who knows? You might have won the Grand Slam, but you've had a great year. Yeah, especially at this tournament, I always got a big support from the crowd. Thank you very much for the whole two weeks. Thank you. And, well, especially when I fall off the horse and, you know, I was out for almost seven weeks. I couldn't play the tournament, so I was really shaky how to come back but I made the final stare at but 
You know, I could have gone for the Grand Slam this year, but I think I'm going to have many more issues in front of me. I think. Well, we certainly hope so. Now, Mr. Varmian, I think you have a trophy for our champion. 97 champion. Congratulations, and good luck. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our 1997 U.S. Open women's champion, Martina Hingis. Those pictures go along with the heritage of the U.S. Open, another champion crown, the very first one here at Arthur Ashe Stadium. And so Martina Hingis says her thank yous and picks up her check for $650,000. Down there in the middle of all those photographers you see at the bottom of your screen, those are the tennis photographers here and they're capturing that for the morning newspapers. Still to come, the men's championship here on CBS, Greg Rosetsky and Patrick Rafter, and we'll have all that for you. We'll talk a little tennis before that. On this championship Sunday here at the U.S. Open, we've not only crowned our women's champion, but we've got a glimpse into the future with the winners today and the boys and girls junior U.S. Open champions. Let's take a look at those new faces. This one.